Hello, my name is Monica Johnson, and today I'm going to be talking to you about sexual harassment in the workplace. Some of the important um, points that I'll be going through today in this presentation is the importance of informing yourself of what sexual harassment is and what you can do to prevent it. Also, knowing the different sexual harassments and what you can do in case you have become a victim and experienced sexual harassment in the workplace. Um, first of all, we're going to be talking about what sexual harassment is. Sexual harassment is the unwelcome sexual advantage which can often interfere with someone's job. It doesn't necessarily have to be physical sexual har harassment. It can also be offensive remarks towards someone, making them uncomfortable by saying degrading words or sexual words towards someone that doesn't really want it. For example, you can tell someone uh, that they have to give you some sexual favors in order to get a promotion. Or if they don't do something for you sexually, then they can, will get fired or they will, you will make sure that they got fired. That's what sexual harassment is, when you're sexually harassing someone. Or trying to touch someone without their consent. Um, there are two types of sexual harassment. The first one is when the person of authority or the person who's in charge is the harasser. Uh, the second one is when the harassment turns the turns into a hostile environment, which often can lead into a very dangerous situation and cause the workplace to become very uncomfortable. And it doesn't just affect, you know, one person. But when that Hostile environment turns into that, it affects the whole place. Everyone that works there, it can affect the way it works. Mm. Over 85% of women have reported that they have experienced some sort of sexual harassment. And about 75% have reported that they experienced some type of retaliation for speaking up about the sexual harassment, which under Title VII, it makes it illegal for someone to retaliate against that person for reporting that harassment. It's against the law to do that. But often most employees don't report or form a complaint about the sexual harassment since they believe, they fear that they believe that no one's going to believe them or they will lose their jobs. Which about 13% of those individuals who do speak up about it, only of those 13% 13, uh, 13 will only file a complaint. Companies are responsible for creating a safe work environment. And when companies create a safe work environment, they can do that by creating more training and stronger policies, which can help prevent sexual harassment and can train certain individuals to know what they can do in case someone comes to them, like supervisors or managers, uh, in case what to do if someone in the workplace experienced sexual harassment. It is important that you know your rights and inform yourself of what you can do in case you ever become a victim of sexual harassment. Uh, it is just not women who experience sexual harassment. Anyone can be can experience sexual harassment. It's just not just women, even though the majority number is women, but men experience sexual harassment too. And according to a Washington Post survey, 10% of the men experience sexual harassment in any workplace, especially if you're um, in a very male-dominant workplace or women, there's not a lot of women that work there, they will often experience some sort of sexual harassment. Uh, there are steps that you can take before you file a complaint. 
Uh, first one is you make sure you let the harasser know that their behavior is making you uncomfortable and then they need to stop. Make sure you keep all the evidence if possible. If there's any evidence, make sure you keep it. And it's also important to let someone know, a coworker, or supervisor, and let someone know that you're being sexually harassed. If after all this, the sexual harassment does not stop, um, you can, I mean, you don't feel safe going to work and it's just too much. Find some legal advice. There's a lot of legal help out there. The EOC, they're there to help you out. They give you resources if I help you find what you can look. Uh, most lawyers will give you a free consultation. Of trying to help you out with what you, they, you can do. If you have a strong case or not, they will help you out with some sort of information. Um... Well, that'll be it. Thank you for listening.